distance can be a major barrier to accessing quality healthcare on time. That's where Angel Flight East comes in. Welcome to Takeoff Talk with Angel Flight East, a nonprofit dedicated to providing free flights for children and adults who need medical treatment far from home. We don't know how many people forego medical care because they don't have accessible transportation. And that's what this podcast is here to change. Join passionate AFE staff members Jess Ames and Maddie Beck as they share real-life stories from people who have used AFE services to get the care they need when they need it. Hey, frequent flyers, and welcome back with another episode of Takeoff Talk. You're here with me, Maddie. And me, Jess. And today we have our passenger, Chrissy, with us. Hey, Chrissy. Hi, girls. I so, love that you're in the Christmas spirit because Christmas is my favorite time of the year. It is definitely not Maddie's. So once oh, again, really? you're a little opposite. No, I am. I freely admit I'm a bit of a Scrooge. The yeah. only part of Christmas that I like is like the the cookie baking. That's about it. I actually found like 30 days of Christmas cookies this morning on TikTok. So that's, that's where my spirit comes in. And that's about it. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> So Christy, if you're comfortable, tell our listeners about your medical journey and how you found Angel Flight East. Sure. So I can't believe it, but it's already been two years, um, a little over two years. I was 44 years old and I was diagnosed in, in September 2021 with advanced colon cancer. And I can't believe everything that unraveled and has happened in the past two years. The number one thing that everybody asks me, and I like to get this message out, is everybody always says, how did you know? How did you know? Because I wasn't even at the age yet where they recommend colonoscopies. And believe it or not, this whole diagnosis all came from me craving ice. I was absolutely addicted to ice and if that ever happens to anyone I always want someone to know that's not normal and and that's what got the ball rolling after two tests I actually it was my third blood test that it finally showed that my ferritin was extremely low and and all the numbers were extremely low that I was borderline needing to go to the hospital Mm. Interesting. I yeah. didn't even know somebody could crave ice. Oh my gosh. It was relentless. It was, it was so overwhelming so much that my children, my, my youngest would say, you can't help me with homework because you're so annoying chewing that ice. Mm-hmm. I would go out of my way. It started with Wawa ice. Then I advanced to Chick-fil-A ice and <laughs> It was so bad. So basically, from what I understand, the baseball sized tumor in my colon was like a little vampire sucking my blood, sucking my blood. And if you're craving ice, um, other things too. But if you're craving things that are really out of the ordinary, like ice and paper, weird things, I only craved ice. It's it was a, sh- a sign of um, anemia. Huh. Wow. Yeah. I know. It's crazy. It is absolutely crazy. And so now you are receiving care where? Like when you first found out this diagnosis, you have this baseball sized tumor. Where did you go first? Yes. So I was, I started my whole journey and the majority of my journey actually at Mainline Health. So where I got my colonoscopy, when my doctor said, okay, we have to find the source of bleeding. This is not normal. You need, you know, one of the things I had to do was go get a colonoscopy. And thank goodness the GI doctor was affiliated with Mainline Health. And you wake up from your colonoscopy and they they tell you right, right there while you're half asleep still that what they found. And um, they told me that- That's was, a wake up call, literally. Oh, Oh, I was like, I was like, yeah, right. Like, go get my husband. Like, like, go ahead, go tell him what you just said to me. This is so silly, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And she was affiliated with Mainline Health. And luckily we have um, one of the best colorectal surgeons in the country at Lankanol. So that's where I started. And um, I was always treated for the first Almost, yeah, two years. I can't believe it. Two years I went through the mainline um, health systems with, I had four surgeries now in the two years and the majority of them are at Lankanol. And I would always get second opinions at like Penn and everywhere else. And the oncologists are just amazing. Especially my Penn oncologist said, just continue with mainline health. We would do the same thing for you. Go to mainline health. It's right down the street from you. You know, you're going to be sick from chemo. So, so they're really a great team. However, 
one I reached out to you guys um, after two years. Well, my first year I was um, on chemotherapy and then it came back and I had another operation and then I went to immunotherapy and then I was on that stable for a whole year and then it came back in two spots. And at that point, I always knew I wanted another opinion at Dana-Farber um, in Massachusetts, in Boston. And that was just not something easy to do at all because of the distance, because of the expense, because it just was not, I would always put that on the back burner, put that on the back burner. So anyway, so um, once it came back again in August this past year, um, I made the switch to Fox Chase and um in Philadelphia. And there are also ones that recommended me going to get another opinion at Dana-Farber because what I have is called Lynch syndrome. And that's the genetic component of uh, colon cancer. And they have, they have a, uh, the number one Lynch Institute in Boston. Oh, the I didn't part. realize that there was like all these options. Yeah. Yes, 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 exactly. And a lot of people haven't heard about Lynch. So it's very difficult to find doctors in anywhere throughout the country that is familiar with it. So, so to answer your long story short, I started with Mainline Health, and they took amazing care of me, three surgeries there, um, chemotherapy and immunotherapy. And then now I'm new to Fox Chase, I just had my recent surgery with Fox Chase. And I'm also a patient with Dana Farber, because thanks to you guys. Mm -hmm. I think you just flew with us a couple weeks ago. How was your first flight? I know you flew home okay. in a care, which was like celebrity status. Wild. Yeah, seriously. Wild. My husband and I cannot stop talking how there's a whole world out there that we had no idea, you know, that the, these, these pilots, I had no idea there were so many airports, you know, from here to Boston. Yeah. And I, this, this is a whole, this is, it was just absolutely incredible. I'm obsessed. Yeah, I know you posted about us on Facebook and somebody I used to hang out with and Manny Young screenshotted it and sent it to me. And she's like, I had no idea this is what Angel Flight actually did. I guess it she saw it through her brother-in-law's Facebook that you're connected with. And I was like, what a small world. It. I love it. We could we could not stop asking you guys, our pilots, um, Dave, you know, everybody, what can we do for you? What can we do for you? And every single one of you throughout the whole entire journey, both ways, said spread awareness, spread awareness. And that's my mission to do because for two years, I put going to visit Boston on the back burner. I really did because there's, you know, you know, all the reasons why I'm recovering from surgery or I'm sick from chemo or I already feel guilty enough I should be saving for my teenagers college and cars you know so yeah we're trying our best to spread awareness about this I, I, I'm telling every doctor every nurse that I talk to and I'm shocked that not a lot That's of people amazing. know not yeah, a lot it we're shocked that so many people don't know. Even we've had some people come to us and say they've been driving or flying for six months to a year. And we're like, how did nobody tell you about an, not even just us, any angel flight organization along the way of their traveling? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, and it's, and it's a real thing. I mean, I was, I got six second opinions this last time. And one of my second opinions was just over in Jersey at, um, Cooper for MD Anderson, what it took out of me, because I was just recovering from surgery that day, it took me like days to bounce back from just a trip, a car ride to Jersey. And mm -hmm. flying with you guys was easier than that. It was so much easier than that. <laughs> That's the best. That's what we're here for. We like to make people's lives easier, not harder, despite oh. what some people may think. No, you guys are living that mission. You really are. So how many, or I would say, how has Angel Flight East affected your life? So oh, that, I felt like um, that was such a, how could I put this? Like, it's it's a hassle to call these doctors. Like, it is full-time work to do this cancer thing. It is full, full-time work. And I still consider myself very healthy. This was so eye-opening how easy this whole entire process was. I think I shared with you guys in two years, this was the easiest thing ever. And I feel like it just like flipped my optimism back. Like it, it got me back. Like, like, the, wow, this is not such a, an issue to, to go take care of myself. Like it, you, you change my perspective back to like the old me. 
so can you also talk to us a little bit about when you first found us, were you like, you want me to get in a what and go to the where? The kind of moments, like, since we're not flying you into the Boston Logans, we're not flying right. you out of the Philly Internationals, and there's just you and your husband in the plane right. with the pilot. Like, what was your first initial reaction hearing about the flights so, that we do? And I was not focused on that a whole lot. I was more like, this can't be real. Like, what? why would they do this? This is not real. This can't be free. I have to tell you, I filled out that online for more information, um, form online, and Dave called me. This is your this is your coworker. Called me within five minutes, and I remember looking at my phone like, "What is happening? Why, why is Angel yeah. calling?" Me? So I was more caught up in that. I have to say, I was more caught up in that. Um, I I have been in a small helicopter before, so I think okay. that that was kind of good, like you know, on a vacation, like a fun thing. But I did say to my husband, I said, "Are you going to be a wimp about this? Like, are you going to be okay flying in this little thing?" And he was like. He goes, before we were married, I jumped out of a plane like that. Like he went skydiving. So Oh, I love it. Wow. Good. So that was funny. But I did get the butterflies when we pulled up at wings and I was like, oh, okay. I gotta get in this little thing. Totally fine though. Totally fine. That's awesome. Yeah. And so what sealed the deal for you where you were like, Oh, I'm going with Angel Flight? Like there oh. like there was no question out of your mind just no questions and I prayed 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 I was like I kept thinking like no there's going to be some sort of loophole this is not good I felt like I hit the lottery I'm not kidding you I felt like I hit the lottery and that's what I mean it changed like I was like okay this is my path and and everything's going to be okay before that from like August until last month and when you flew me I was like so annoyed that I had to do this if that makes sense mm. it all just yep. fell into place it all just fell into place thanks to you guys yeah that's amazing I always think one a couple of years ago we had somebody call our executive director not believing that it was a legitimate service and she actually had to go meet with her face to face and be like no this is actually the pilots cover all costs and you won't get a bill afterwards really because there's so many scams out there and there's so many yeah. th there's so many knows and bad news um in this cancer world that I do believe it I do believe it yeah yeah it's so different but we're so happy that we got to like be a part of everything that you've gone through and I mean we're such a little itty bitty bit of it but it's still just knowing that we were in uh your corner at any point of it that's my favorite part personally yeah and it's so comforting it's so comforting when I thought the other thing I thought was, okay, is this worth it? Because I don't want to use my one chance to fly. And I started researching more and I was like, wait, people do this more than once? Why are they, why are they allowing that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. If anything, I feel like we're looking for more patience. Like all of our pilots are like, can I go now? Can I, yeah. okay. They're lying. I have something to do now. Lovely. That is so lovely. Well, I'll keep yeah. going. Yeah. <laughs> Literally a pilot came into Jess's office. Was it yesterday, Jess? And was like, these are my days that I'm off. Here you go. Like, do you need me? Do you want, do you have something for me to do? Like wanting I, to fly. Wanting to yeah. fly. Oh, yes. Okay. Wanting for us to put them to work. And I'm like, I mean, I might have something for you to like do in the office. And like, not what I was asking. I was like, ah. oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I really think it gives them a reason to fly because a lot of them say they just get bored going up for lunch or flying in circles. Right, so this right. really pairs their passion with somebody who needs to get somewhere for treatments. That's so heartwarming because I felt, I kept saying, thank you, sorry, thank you, you know, and, and right. they, Mark and Greg were our were our pilots and I felt like they were our guardian angels walking us walking us mark that was the small plane going to Boston and the whole entire time I'm still like I can't believe this is happening for free what is happening he literally walked us from the plane into the lift the car that you guys had us had us um take and I'm like he's like our dad like putting us <laughs> in the car <laughs> He's the best. I don't know if David told you, but afterwards he sent a picture of you guys in the plane and just said, if they need to fly again, please let me know and I'll do it. Oh yeah. my God, that's lovely. Well, we feel the same. We feel the same about Mark and Greg. It's, it's great. It is. Yeah. We've actually flown in Greg's plane to Boston before too. Oh really? The King Air? Didn't you feel yeah. that? It was I nice. Thought, yeah. Yeah. Funny. Totally. Maddie was getting like a blanket in the back. I was. <laughs> I can't even deny that. I did. One final thought you would want to leave our listeners with. 
So, you know, I thought, I thought about this. Cancer wants you to be miserable, right? Cancer wants to make your life difficult. That's what cancer, that's all that cancer wants to do. And um, it's wild to me that there's a flip side of cancer and there's what I call the grace of cancer. And you guys are walking testaments to that, that it's also showing us how amazing the world can be and how wonderful people can be. And, you know, you guys are living proof of there's so much goodness and there's so much more out there than just sad, scary cancer. We would never have been able to have, we thought we were like on a vacation, like on a date going, going and being treated like royalty. So we, we appreciate that so much. So it's very important to see that there is such the, the grace of cancer. And thank you for showing us that. And the other thing is also check your colon, check your colon. That's all, you know, I can't say that enough. Check your colon, especially if you're over 45. (laughs) Well, you are the best, Christy. Thank you so much for all that you've been spreading about us and the work that you're helping us do. Uh, We can't do it without you. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I told you guys when we landed, if you guys ever have a job opportunity, I want to work for you. (laughs) Wow. Thank you. I do. What you guys are doing is, is, is so important. So thank you for doing it every day. We love it. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you in Rory's Ford soon. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Christy's basically my neighbor. Yeah. Jess even said, do you need a ride down to Wingsfield? And it's funny because I grew up there. I grew up there. Real quick, let me tell you, when I was little, my mom used to pack a picnic and we used to go. She was used to take my brother and I and we would do a picnic and we would go to Wingsfield and watch the planes land. Oh my gosh. People wow. still do that. Do they do that? Yeah. 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 Full circle, man. It was this whole thing. Yep. This whole thing just worked out great. I love it. Well, not that it's as fun, but Fox Chase is down the street from my house, and we can go oh. there, too. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. There we go. There we go. We have friends everywhere. Well, I hope to be able to have the opportunity to fly with you again in the future. Dana Farber agreed with everything that Fox Chase was doing, and I said, I said, can I come here for treatment? And she said, you can, but you shouldn't, because Fox Chase, but they want me to check in once a year if nothing else, um, if, if, if nothing else happens between then. So hopefully I get to fly with you soon if you'll have us. Well, you know where to find us anytime. We are happy to take you guys. So our, our teenage daughters are super jealous, so I might have to take one of them next time. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. We'll let them come. <laughs> Thank you, girl. All right. Thanks, Thanks Christy. We will it. talk to you soon. Thanks for the t-shirts. Thanks for the pictures. And of tell course. David a big hug, too. Thank you. We will. You Bye. Bye, girls. That's it for today's episode of Takeoff Talk with Angel Flight East. If you want to learn more about our services, please visit our website at www.angelflighteast.org or call our office at 215-358-1900. Join us in our mission. If you're a healthcare worker or a patient in need of air travel and flight services, AFE is here for you. Subscribe to the show so you can hear more stories. Join us again next week right here on Takeoff Talk.